there were two things that kind of rubbed me the wrong way uh, when he was on the show. Number one was that he started by kind of getting into this argument about, um, which I see a lot of people who are supporting this conflict doing, the argument about like, okay, well, here are the number of total civilians dead, and here are the number of Hamas militants dead, and let's look at that ratio, and then is that ratio that far off from what you find in a typical war? And there's a few problems with this. Number one, the numbers are totally unreliable. And so you're having this conversation. Sides, right? Yes, on both sides. I mean, both sides are totally incentivized to exaggerate the numbers. And also, in the fog of war, it's very hard to keep up with these numbers. We never really know the numbers of dead in war until like years later when the excess mortality is calculated and then you get a better idea of what was really going on there. Um, the The... Israeli government talking about the number of Hamas militants they've killed seems to be them just pulling numbers out of their ass. Like they drop these bombs, they don't know how many, who got who, and who was a part of. Are they going in there and checking dog tags? Yeah, like, they're not. You know what I mean? And, but anyway, but even that, I just even if the numbers were right, it's like, look, dude, if you look at the population density and you just look at the number of bombs that Israel has dropped, and you just see a lot of the footage that we've seen, and you just listen to stories that doctors are telling. I literally just saw an interview a couple weeks ago with a doctor who just got back from Gaza, and he was talking about how they have a major anesthesia uh, shortage over there. So just think about the implications of that, like what that oh. means. It means they're operating on kids without anesthesia. You know what I mean? Jesus it's just Christ. so. So the point is that if you're talking about okay, well, this many Hamas people are dying compared to this many innocent babies are dying. That's not the question, okay? Like when you're inflicting this level of human suffering on people, the question for any decent civilized person is, is this absolutely necessary? Is this, is this is, the only way to Is do there it? any other option besides doing this? And as soon as you frame the question that way, you realize that, oh yeah, there actually is. And that it's not true that Israel, there will just be October 7th after October 7th if Israel stops doing this. The fact is that, of course, Netanyahu's never allowed a real investigation into October 7th to happen. But everybody pretty much concludes that Israel dropped the ball in a massive way, in a massive way that their security was just in shambles. And all they really needed to do was not rely so much on these, you know, machine gun robots and have actual soldiers at the border. They could easily well, just wasn't stop there this an issue right of now. Protests where the sh soldiers were allocated towards. Yes, they, they yes. It's basically they had. So as a, I think as a result of um the protests against Netanyahu, he had start he had started to ally with some even further right wing groups than he normally would have, and to appease them, he was pulling soldiers off of the Gaza border and putting them over it, toward the West Bank, which is what the religious Jews on the right really care about. And yes, they basically got caught with their pants down. Um, so, but I'm just saying they could just stop doing this. It's not they all die or they keep doing this. They could stop and Israel will, can still protect itself. In fact, I'd argue their security would be enhanced if they stop doing this. Um, but the other thing which you brought up uh, to Coleman Hughes was that you you mentioned to him, which uh, you said, what about the, the, didn't Israel like prop up Hamas? Wasn't that part of their strategy for a while? And he, I'll give him the benefit of the doubt and maybe he just doesn't know about that detail of this as much because I, if not, he was kind of being dishonest. But he, but maybe he just wasn't familiar with all of this stuff. But he kind of went. You said that, and then he kind of dismissed it by saying, "Well, there's um, there's a quote that's attributed to Netanyahu, but it wasn't on videotape. So like we don't ba essentially being like we don't really know if." Netanyahu said this or not and then just kind of moved on to the conversation away from that But I find this I found this in all of my debates that I've done on this and I've done like eight debates on this since the war broke out Everybody on the pro-israeli side does not want to grapple with that point because it really is like a it's a narrative shattering point mm. Once you acknowledge it, but so right, but well, but if it isn't on videotape He has a point as well. Well here. Well, let me okay. Right? So here's the deal, right? So the quote that he's referring to was a quote by Benjamin Netanyahu. It was something along the lines of anybody who wants to thwart the Palestinians having their own state needs to support propping up Hamas, bolstering Hamas, transferring money to them to maintain. Right. So there was a quote like this. So and Hamas here's, maintains power. Right. 
So Hamas maintains power so that they never, we never have to give them a state because we can look to the international community, we can look to liberal Jews in Israel and say, look, we have no partner for peace. They're a crazy terrorist group. So we, know, we never have to make a deal. We don't have to fulfill our promise and wh- that we how, would how give How is the, this attributed to him? So basically, th- this quote particularly, okay, this was at a closed door meeting with the Likud party. So this is Benjamin Netanyahu's political party, his far right party that's in power right now in Israel. So it's true that this was a closed door meeting and that it's not on tape. Um, so what happened is, as far as I could tell, the, the first person who reported this, I believe was uh, a, a lady who's a reporter for the uh, Jerusalem Post. And then it's been run in a bunch of other newspapers since then. So what basically what happened is an eyewitness who was there at the meeting. So another Likud party member in Benjamin Netanyahu's political party came and told her that he said this. And then she went and checked with somebody else who was there. And he also confirmed that, like, yes, Benjamin Netanyahu said this. And then a third person who was also at the meeting came out and wrote about it in his book or wrote about it in another newspaper article or something like that. So you had three eyewitnesses from within his own political party who confirmed that he said this. Now, Take that for what it's worth. I think that's reasonably strong that three eyewitnesses all sure. in his political party said As long as but they weren't that, trying to get rid of him. But because but, you can get more than three people to say that Donald Trump was in collusion with sure, Russia. Sure. Right? So even even say if you don't trust them. Coleman acted as if that's what the entire case is built off of, which is just not true at all. It's not just this one Benjamin Netanyahu quote. It's dozens and dozens of quotes from Israeli leaders all throughout the political spectrum. There's been reporting on this done by almost every major Israeli uh, newspaper. Uh, Haaretz, Times of Israel. The Times of Israel on October 8th had a piece by Tal Schneider which was how Ben Lad, uh, Ben, excuse me, how Netanyahu's support for Hamas just blew up in his face. It, it was uh, the next day, and because every, even critics like uh, Ehud Barak, who was the former prime minister, he's a Labor Party. He's a critic of Benjamin Netanyahu, so he was a critic of this plan to prop up Hamas. But it's totally uncontroversial that this was their plan. The New York Times uh, just ran a piece. Um, I think it was late last year. Might, it might have been early this year. Um, where they talked about how two weeks before October 7th, Benjamin Netanyahu sent the head of the Mossad to Qatar because funds going into Hamas had slowed down. And he sent them in there to make sure the funds continued. It's, the, the case for this is overwhelming. 